Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to the annual Lutheran Church member of the Evangelical Lutheran Synod on this last Sunday of End Times. And our theme for today is Believers in Christ Await His Return. And we begin with our first hymn, hymn number 610. Responsibly. 
My heart is stirred by the noble theme as I recite my verses for the king. My tongue is the pen of a skillful writer. You are the most excellent of men, and your lips have been anointed with grace since God has blessed you forever. Gird your sword upon your side, Almighty. One clothe yourself, splendor and majesty. In your majestic ride forth victoriously because of truth, humility, and righteousness. Let your right hand display awesome deeds. Let your sharp arrows pierce the hearts of the king's enemies. Let the nations fall beneath your feet. Your throne, O God, will last forever and ever. church triumphant in eternity. 
Our Old Testament lesson is from Isaiah 65, reading verses 17 through 19. Behold, I will create a new heaven and a new earth. The former things will not be remembered, nor will they come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I will create. For I will create Jerusalem to be a delight, and its people a joy. I will rejoice over Jerusalem and take delight in my people. The sound of weeping and of crying will be heard in it no more. Here ended our first reading. In the epistle lesson, the church brings anxious warnings in her desire to bring home every heart the wonder of the one great last opportunity. The epistle warns to keep awake, be sober, put on the armor, not of offense, but of readiness. Then something sweet and peaceful reaches the heart. It dispels the awe, filling the heart, the thought of the last day. For God has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, so that we might live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up. The epistle lesson for this, the last Sunday of the church year, is written in the fifth chapter of 1 Thessalonians, reading verses 1 through 11. Now, brothers, about the times and dates, we do not need to write to you, for you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying peace and safety, destruction will come upon them suddenly, as labor pains on a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brothers, are not in darkness, so that this day should surprise you like a thief. You are all sons of the light and sons of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness, so then let us not be like others who are asleep. Let us be alert and self-controlled. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be self-controlled putting on faith and love as a breastplate, and the hope of salvation as a helmet. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we might live together with Him. Therefore, encourage one another, and build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. Here ended our epistle, we join in the graduate. Alleluia, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. His holy word, Christ, gives life. We were once dead. He has made us alive through faith. And at Christ's coming, we will rise to life with God. The Holy Gospel is written in the fifth chapter of St. John, reading verses 25 and 29. Please rise for the reading. and has now come when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. As for the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son to have life in himself and he has given him authority to judge because he is the Son of Man. Do not be amazed at this, for a time is coming when all who are in their graves will hear his voice and come out. Those who have done good will rise to life. Those who have done evil will rise to be condemned. 
Here endeth the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Praise be to thee. Let us confess our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed found on page 22. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men, and for our salvation, came down from heaven, was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was a man, and was crucified also for us under conscious Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, According to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is saved by the prophets. And I believe one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated for our next hymn, and we sing 609.
Jesus, grant that we may see you with joy when you come in the glory of your heavenly Father. Make us alive so that we may share that joy with others, that they also may enter with you and all the saints who went before us. Amen. Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Our text is written in the fifth chapter of John, reading again verses 25 through 29. We read as follows in Jesus' name. <coughs> I tell you the truth, the time is coming and has now come when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son to have life in himself. And he has given him authority to judge because he is the Son of Man. Do not be amazed at this, for a time is coming when all who are in their graves will hear his voice and come out. Those who have done good will rise to life. Those who have done evil will rise to be condemned. O Lord, sanctify us by your truth. Your word is true. Death is the separation of what belongs together. For God created man in his own image, with perfect righteousness and holiness, sorrow, sickness, and death were unknown to him. <coughs> but when Adam and Eve fell into sin, fell from God, they died. And as a result, all people are born in sin and dead in their trespasses. This is often called spiritual death. This spiritual death, then, is the total separation of our human nature, making us unwilling and unable to come to God. And this will end in our eternal death, total separation from but God gives us a lifeline through the waters of holy baptism. Dear fellow redeemed, as the church year draws to a close, we are directed to focus on the end of all things which will be fulfilled with our Lord's return. Today we look at our theme, believers in Christ await his return. And as true believers, we are to await this with joy and with the assurance that eternal life in heaven is ours. Our text says, I tell you the truth, the time is coming and has now come when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. How amazing it is to learn that Jesus, just by speaking his word, gives us eternal life. God's Son came into the world to make people who are spiritually dead alive. This is done by the preaching of the gospel, which you hear here every Sunday. But how does this happen? Well, for most of us, it's when we were brought by our parents to the waters of holy baptism. When a little infant is brought to the baptismal font, then Christ raises them from the dead. By water combined with his word, and his word always is life-giving. And when a sinner hears the voice, of Christ, His Word, the Holy Spirit gives faith in Christ, and they become believers. Then that sinner is raised to life. Just as surely as Lazarus heard the voice of Christ even in his tomb, so dead sinners are made alive in Christ. So this is what's happened then to you and me. We who were dead have been made alive and raised by the word of Christ. The instance we came to faith, whenever that was, that our dead souls sprang to life again. The way it was supposed to be from the beginning. 
All believers pass from death to life. And not just life, but eternal life. And how can we be so full of life? Because Christ himself has given us life. He dwells within us. And our life is hidden in him. And this is so powerful. It is almost more than our body can contain. The glory of the Son of God wants to burst forth into plain sight before all people. And since we have already been raised, we've already skipped past the fearful judgment that is to come. We have been judged. We have been declared innocent because Christ was condemned in our place. He was declared guilty on the cross so that we will be forever innocent in God's eyes. Oh, there will be those that try to bring accusations against us, the devil, the world, our own sinful flesh. But since Christ has authority to judge, he has already declared us innocent. We can never be found guilty. This is a guaranteed promise of this powerful life that is inside you. And it is the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. Just as he came to life, therefore believers in Christ are forever alive. Oh, each of us will face or experience the brief and gentle sleep that flesh calls death. But really, that sleep is the final greatest blessing that we can receive here on this earth, since that sleep brings you into the presence of Christ forever. But what about those who reject this call of the Holy Spirit? There are many who shut their hearts against the voice and are unwilling to come to Jesus remain in their spiritual death. But there's still more to come. At the appointed hour, when time has, we know it, will come to an end, all who are in their graves will hear his voice and come out. The graves will be open, all bodies long since decayed will come forth physically alive. As our text continues, those who have done good will rise to life, and those who have done evil will rise to condemnation, condemnation to be condemned. Believers will rise from their graves with glorious bodies to live with God in heaven, and unbelievers will be condemned to eternal damnation to be with the <coughs> devil and his angels. This is often a verse that we question. How does God measure good in us? Well, you and I should shudder if we think that eternity is riding on any good that we have done. We should, because Scripture speaks in Romans 3.12, there is no one good, not even one. On Judgment Day, Jesus will identify those who have done good, but Remember the readings from a few weeks ago. They will still ask, when did we do those things, Lord? Of course, the answer lies in what Jesus says in verse 24. Whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be condemned. You see, those who hear God's word believe in the Father and the Son already have eternal life. So we are saved by faith alone. But faith is never alone. In faith, believers receive eternal life. And that faithful, and the faithful give evidence of the good they do. God works, God works allows uh, true saving faith, doing good continuously. The dead soul can produce no good works. Just as a dead tree produces no fruit. That's what James, the brother of the Lord, wrote about in his second chapter, verse 26. 
as the body is dead without the spirit, so faith without works is dead. We should never imagine that there's such a faith as this, a faith that exists and remains. A faith without works is not really faith at all, and no one should take comfort in that kind of faith. In fact, it's impossible not to do good works. Luther puts it this way, a living, busy, active, mighty thing, this faith, it is impossible not to do good works. For the unbeliever, those who have done evil will be condemned. You see, their deeds are all counted as evil because they felt they were doing them to earn their own good. They will be condemned. Those who refuse to believe in God's only Son will be judged, as it says in John 3.36. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. But whoever rejects the Son will not see life, for God's wrath remains on him. They will face eternal death, separation from God forever. Brothers and sisters in Christ, thanks be to God, because Eternal death will never touch us. This is the pledge from God himself. And he has sealed that guarantee with his own son's blood. We will live with him forever. That is God's promise to all who have faith in Jesus. So as believing Christians, we eagerly await his return. Amen. Please rise for the blessing. And now may the peace of God, which passes all our understanding, keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. Please rise for prayer. We give thee but thine own, whatever the gift may be, all that we have is thine alone, a trust, O Lord, from thee. praise for your great goodness and mercy, 
You have sent your only begotten Son to become incarnate, redeem us from sin and everlasting death. We ask you to enlighten our hearts by your Holy Spirit through the means of grace, that we may evermore give you thanks for your grace, and may we comfort ourselves with the same in all time of tribulation and temptation. Send forth labors in the harvest who teach the word in its truth and purity, that your joyous gospel may be heard in every land and nation. Grant health and wisdom to our government and all who are in authority that they may dwell in peace in this land of freedom. Send our land good weather and needed rains that we each may eat our daily bread and offer our first fruits unto you. Bless the efforts of the business workers and all labors and help them in their needs, providing all for their goods. Protect our homes and families from all danger of body and soul, that we may live a life pleasing to you here on earth and hereafter in eternity with you and all our brothers who have gone before us. These and whatsoever other things thou would have us ask of thee, O God, grant unto us for the sake of the bitter suffering and death of Jesus Christ, thy only Son, our Lord and Savior. Please be seated as we continue with our next hymn, hymn number 618. <laughs>
Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom